Hi, everyone. It's Realtor Mike Thomas uh, here going over again the market reports for November. Now, we know that we're always a month behind and because of the holidays, uh, it's a little bit later than I expected to uh, do this video. But I uh, just wanted to report on November uh, of our five counties to see what happened. What's going on? Is the market going up? Is the market going down? Uh, has the market corrected itself? All those neat little things. So let's get started. You're, there's some really great information at the end of this video that I think is going to blow your mind. Uh, it's kind of my end of the year report on what I've seen in the field. I sell houses every single day. I look at about um, about 200 houses a month, uh, just looking at them, going out, showing houses, not all of them are sold, but uh, I do get a good feel about where the market is down here and where it's going. So let's report on Southeast um, Florida and let's start with Broward County. So we've got some great, uh, great information here. Notice that we are in November here, um, <clears throat> November, 2022, and the real estate uh, prices up over last year, 11.6 this time last year, which it was a pretty hot market last year. So uh, real estate medium sales price still up. Now, I don't know why everybody likes to look at the medium sales price. Of course, you got your high end and you got your low end and they always look, okay, what is the one directly in the middle? which is different than the average sales price, but I want to kind of take a look at both of them just to kind of give us an idea. And I'll do that towards the end of this video, kind of give us an overall view. And I have some really neat statistics from other counties around Florida, like Tampa and uh, the, ta the greater Tampa area, the Orlando area. Um, and I just want to go through that with you just so you can see for yourself what the numbers truly are and what they mean. So up 11.3% over last year in the single family home department here, single family homes up here, 2022, November, we're in the month of November over last year, uh, 540,000 compared to 585,000 last year. And in the condominium market, we are up still 9.7% over last year. And I noticed that everybody's talking about the great real estate crash. When is that going to happen? Um, you know, is it a crash? I'm going to make another video about a market crash and what it entails. A market crash is different than a market slowdown or a market correction. And I'm going to go over all of that for you, probably in my next video here in the next couple of weeks. So do subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, you know, click the subscribe button and click the notification button so you are notified when I release a new video that might be helpful to you. So here we are, Broward County home price is still up. Yeah, it's taking a little longer to sell, but it doesn't seem to be bothering sellers much because they'd rather wait a little longer and get a better price for their home. I know that that's not what buyers expect, but it's what sellers have been doing. Here in Palm Beach County, we're still in the month of November down here, um, and we are single family homes, 580,000, up 23.4% over last year. And townhouses and condominiums uh, still up 17.6% over last year. So what does that tell us? It's taken a little longer to sell the home, but again, sellers uh, don't seem to mind that. Martin County. This has been a crazy county of ups and down. And here, it is actually down. If we're looking at last year's prices over this year's prices, we're down 4% over last year. And I have a pretty good explanation why. It shot up so fast that it made a small correction. Now, this is only one month out of many months, but I do have um, an Excel spreadsheet to kind of go over that with you to see where the market is going and how it's been progressing. So we're under townhouses and condominiums, which still seems to be strong, up 42.5%. And this is the reason why it's coming down. When you jump so high so fast, there's always a little correction going on. 
Uh, and that's just the real estate market. The real estate market is very inelastic. That means it doesn't really stretch that fast. Now, with the stock market, it can go like this. It's crazy. But with a real estate market, it's very slow moving, very inelastic. And that's the difference between the stock market and the real estate market. And when the real estate market is normally down, it's because people are pulling their money out of the stocks and investing in, in something as tangible as real estate. That in my lifetime, I've never seen it go to zero. Um, even a piece of land that's underwater, somebody's willing to pay something for it. Now, stocks have gone to zero and, um, you know, have people have taken the loss on those kind of intangible items. So let's take a look at Port St. Lucie County, where 392,590 uh, this year in November. Again, November down here, single family homes up 19% over last year. And under townhouses and condominiums, we're right here, we're up 275, which is an 11.3% increase over last year. Yes, it's taking a little longer to sell, but again, sellers don't seem to mind to wait for their money. Uh, Miami-Dade County, the big one, the big kahuna. So what's going on in Miami-Dade County? Still the same as always, still continuing to rise. I don't know about these doom and gloomers. I keep telling you that the market is crashing and it's already crashed and it's tumbled and I don't know what else they're saying. But when I look at these numbers, it does not look like it's a tumbling market. It looks very steady. Um, some of these numbers are pretty high and are due for a correction. And um, I'm going to put out a video, um, my next video, I guess, in, within a week or so. Um, for the new year, I get to look at all the data and analyze the entire year and kind of tell you if there has been a market correction, if there's been a crash, uh, is it going to crash? So it'll give me a better picture about what we're looking at because I'm still waiting for the month of December, which won't come out until January. But I'm going to show you some neat little things that I haven't shown you before. So it's going to be really nice that you're uh, with me until the end of this video. Again, Miami-Dade County up 9.4% over last year, November, and 14.2% in the townhouse and condominium market over last year. So that's our statistics um, for Southeast Florida. The wonderful thing about um, this is I've got some great other information that we haven't looked at, and it's this graph over here. Let me see if I can't move me out of the way. So here is the Miami, Fort Lauderdale, West Palm Beach area, and we can see that it's been blocked out here of the three counties. And... Uh, the real estate market and prices. Now, what we are looking at right now is the average sales price. And this is what I'm looking at here. Now, you notice that in June, we were, the average sales price was just over a million dollars in the three county area. In September, when the feds drastically raised the interest rate, it fell. Um, down to about eight hundred thousand dollars. What does that mean? That's a that's a twenty percent correction. That right there, ladies and gentlemen, is a twenty percent correction over the three county area. Now, what you may say is gone. Okay, Mike, what does that look like when there's not the three counties? What does that mean for Palm Beach County, Broward County, and Miami Dade County? So let's take a look at that. So we have Palm Beach County, Palm Beach County, and we're gonna apply that. And you notice that here we are just blocked out Palm Beach County. Again, you're gonna see the same thing. The average sales price in Palm Beach County was 1,182 and change. And in September dropped to a low point of $860,000. Again, a 20% correction in the marketplace. So that basically tells me that, hey, there was already a market correction of 20% in the area in Palm Beach County and the three county areas. Let's take a look at Broward County. Um, Broward County, apply, average sale price. 
And here we are in uh, June, July, 823,000 in September, October. The correction happened at the end of September. And when you're going down from 800 and uh, 30,000 down to 693,000, that's about a 20, 18, 20% correction. So it leads, lets me believe that there has already been a 20% correction in the marketplace, but nobody really noticed, which is kind of odd because I guess they saw the prices escalate so high, they're not really seeing things. And let's see, Miami Dade County. Here we are again. May, June, we're looking at the top of the market. Um, almost a million one. Here it is, September, dropping down to 875,000 ish. Again, it jumps back up and it comes back down. So there was a good month for Miami Dade in October. But if you took that month out, the correction would still be there of about 20%. So my analysis of these charts, and these are true numbers that come from um, our multiple listings. Every time something gets sold, uh, it moves like that. Let's take a look at some of the other counties around, okay? Um, uh, let's take a look at the greater Tampa area, St. Petersburg, Clearwater area. And let's take a look at their average sales price. Again, June hit the top of the market, 520,000, and dropped down to 465,000. So that basically means that the average sales price in that area is retracting. Uh, let's take a look at the Orlando area, the greater Orlando, Kissimmee, uh, Sanford area that Tri-County area. And we notice that here we are in June at 525. In September, oops, uh, it's 492,000. And again, going back up again. So I think there was a correction, but that correction has not really affected the market. Um, like other people thought it may. Let's take a look at the Jacksonville area uh, and that greater area right there, Jackson, St. Augustine, almost down to Daytona. And again, we see a sales price in June, July, about 500,000, um, dropping about $25,000 in price and then going back up. And here we are again, uh, as a drop. What is that telling me? That the market is slowing down and retracting. The difference between a crash and a slowdown in the market is very, very different. A crash is when all of a sudden, think about two cars driving. I always call it the buyer demand car and the seller car, the seller pricing car. And when they're driving down the road, if the the buyers hit their brakes and the sellers don't, you have a crash. However, if the sellers start hitting their brakes and stopping, even though right before a crash happens, that's called a slowdown in the market, which is different. A crash is a hard crash. There's damages, there's loss of homes. And I'm not seeing that very much in our multiple listing. I check our multiple listings. I check it for foreclosures all the time. How many foreclosures are on the market? How many uh, bank owned properties are there? And again, very little. So I don't know what people are out there telling people and saying, oh my God, look at all these foreclosures, 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 foreclosures. I am not seeing that here in South uh, East Florida or Florida in general. Uh, I look for foreclosures all the time. I've gone, I go to foreclosures websites where they actually post them up for auction. And I'm not seeing very many foreclosures out there. So what people are saying about foreclosures simply is not true. Not with the numbers and data that I'm looking at. Um, what do I think 2023 is going to give us? 
I think it's going to slow down a little bit more and kind of equalize itself out. Um, I'm not sure if home prices are going to drop dramatically. Uh, first time home buyers come to me and just tell me, Mike, I'm not getting the house that I want, you know, and the house that they were looking at two, three years ago were four bedrooms, three bathrooms, 2000 square foot house. And I'm thinking you're a first time home buyer. Actually, there shouldn't, you shouldn't be buying a single family brand new house anyway. <laughs> Most people that are first time home buyers are buying a condominium or a townhouse, something, you know, that they can afford. The international markets right now are crazy as well. The most expensive real estate in the world is Hong Kong, and Hong Kong is about $10,000 per square foot, uh, followed by, I think it's China, Germany, um, I think Taiwan is in there, um, Switzerland is definitely in the top uh, five or 10, but I'm going to do another video just on that so you can see where we are. We're actually number 26 on the list at about 400 or so dollars per square foot. Um, and we are still the most affordable country to live in in the world. So if compared to us, the other first world countries in the world, the United States is still a very strong buy. And I'm going to make another video on that. So please subscribe to my channel, click the notification bell, give us a like if you thought that this video was good. And if you want to see more videos, please leave us a comment below and just tell us what you want to uh, know about next. And I'll be sure to uh, get my team and staff on that. Again, thank you so much. I appreciate your time uh, and I will see